Hello. In this video, we are going to explore some ways that enumerations in the C++ language can be made into very first-class citizens and to be made far more useful than they are by default. They're not horrible in C++ itself per se, but um, they're not great either. And with, with the use of some fairly simple tools, we can really turn them into some something very powerful and useful. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. And this is using, um, I should say, this is part of uh, a very large code base of mine. It's about a million lines of code, which I've written for a very long time. So it includes uh, about half of it is a um, general purpose library. And the other half built on top of that is an automation platform, home automation platform called um, CQC or the Charm Quark uh, controller. And I'll provide a link to that in the video description if you can look into that. But here we're down in the uh, general purpose part of it. And this is really fundamental stuff we're looking at here. And what this is using is um, my IDL compiler. And IDL languages are, are interface description languages is, is what they're, what IDL means. They are for describing usually uh, calls between uh, client and server. Um, and in, in my case also that is true. Um, we have a very extensive um, object request broker system, which allows us to uh, make client server calls as though they're local calls and have all of the parameters automatically sent over and all the return values automatically brought back and everything is very nice. But another thing that we can do with the IDL language is to generate types and constants. And one of those types is enumerations. Actually, this at this time, the only types it will do are, are enumerations. And um, we're going to demonstrate that here and how powerful that can be. So I've got just a little program up here. It's called Video Demo. And um, this is a very simple program. It doesn't use a lot of what um, um, my code base uh, supports. I should say the, the actual, the general purpose part of it is called Sidlib. And that'll make it easier for than me to just continue to say my code base and that kind of thing. So this is Sidlib. And it doesn't provide a lot of what, or doesn't demonstrate a lot of what Sidlib can do, but um, it, it covers uh, what we need to get into here. And so basically, um, it's just creating an output console so that we can dump some uh, text out to the console for demonstration purposes. It creates a facility object, which is something specific to my stuff, but it basically represents either a, a, an executable or a library. In this case, it represents this executable and gives some information about that. And this is just a magic macro that points um, the entry point to this uh, thread function here. Normally, we would create our own derivative of the facility and we would uh, start up the entry point in that and everything would be relative to that. But for this very simple program, that's overkill. So we're just pointing the main thread at um, this uh, global function here. And so what we're gonna do is just to uh, run through some, some functionality that, the, um, that our enumerations can do. I've emptied it out here so we can add it back in a little as we go. So first, let's just look at the IDO file here or next, let's look at the IDO file. And it just um, it has a section for globals and types within that, and there also a section for constants, which, like I said, we're not using here. And it, we've defined three enumerations. One is called brain types, and one is called access, and another is called labels. Um, this one, the access, is to demonstrate bitmapped uh, enumerations, which are often convenient to use. And labels is to uh, just to demonstrate that we can use loadable text which can be translated, of course, as the text for the enumerations, which is very convenient. So the first one called brain types here is, um, is this one. We're going to demonstrate most of it with this. And we have various mapping schemes we can use. And so this maps what, um, what gets spit out when we stream out one of these enums to a text stream. This uh, controls what gets um, what it gets translated to if we use a particular function that does a, a, a translation mapping. This controls whether it can be streamed to binary streams. Here, this provides an alternative text mapping, and um, we use that in another type of mapping function, and yet still another one, which we use in another mapping function. So we can have various ways that we can translate back and forth between text and the enumeration part. And for contiguous ones, we can also do increment and decrement. I've just asked it to do an increment here, which we'll make use of, which is very convenient as well. All right, and so here we define the actual enumerated values. So we've got empty, evil, um, opaque, silly, and foolish. And then we've got some alternate text, which are alternate values of that, void, nasty, veiled, comic, and innocent. And then we have some alt text too, which say maybe this is something that you would have to use to represent these values to some other server or something, T1, T2, T3, and T4, and T5. 
And we can also do synonyms, which are convenient. So we, we've created one called Beyond Opaque. And so that, that one is set to, um, to silly. So anything from Beyond Opaque and beyond is, you know, is Beyond Opaque. So um, um, this is often convenient. Say sometimes you might want to only, you might want to check that something is within uh, a range of values, but that range might change over time. So you don't want to hard code the actual values in the code. So you can create synonyms for those and use those and they can be changed here over time and the code won't be affected. So convenient to be able to do that. And it will also generate some magic values for us as well, which we'll see. So first let's just build it. And what's going to happen is the IDL compiler is going to see this file and it's going to generate some output for us. And now that if we come back over here and we refresh that, we'll see that it generated two files. The names of these files are controlled by the um, build tool and there's a whole project um, definition language, very fancy smancy, and it controls all this stuff. We won't get into that. But if we uh, open up the types file, we can see that it's generated some um, enumeration, the actual enumeration, and these are various functions that it's generated for us. Same for this one. Oops, I, I forgot to update the comment on this one. So this one uses the same comment as the brains type, sorry. So this is the um, bit mapped one, and this is the uh, labels one. So you can see that um, here it, it generates some uh, magic values for contiguous ones a count, a min and a max, and then this is the synonyms. And these are often convenient for iteration, which we'll see. And for this one, it generates some bit testing methods. I might add some more of these later. And for the labels, currently, um, it doesn't do anything yet because I guess I haven't added any mapping schemes yet. Well, I only added, um, I added the stream map, but I haven't actually made use of it. We'll come back to that later and, and demonstrate how that works. Okay, so first let's just uh, look at the brain types here. So the first thing that I've got is just all of them. You can see that they have a, um, like a, val a validity check. Those are, that's always done and that's very convenient to have. And I've just got that in here so far. So if I were to run that, this is the brain is bad, dude. And that's because I purposefully put in a bad value, 999, and then I just tested it to make sure that it was okay. Right, that's pretty obvious there. So next thing, let's see, what do we got here? I'm, I'm just gonna cut and paste code in. I don't wanna take time to type this stuff in and make mistakes and whatnot. So next we're going to demonstrate uh, iteration and text streaming. So what we're going to do is um, set a brain types to the minimum. We're gonna iterate up to the maximum with a, we're gonna use an increment operator. And then for each one, we're gonna dump it out to the output console. So let's build that. And now let's run it. And you can see it basically just iterated through. And because in this case, this is um, this is using the text mapping. And we can see that the text mapping says that the base name is what it wants to use. And the base name is just this part here. The actual full name, as we can see, is you know, ebrain type underscore whatever. And the base name is just this trailing part. So that's all we're wanting to use here. So that's what we got when we when we did that uh, text output. We could use uh, any of the other values that we want there. All right, so that's obviously extremely useful. So let's do another one here. These will use the translation me uh, methods. So what we're going to do is um, set a brain enum to opaque. We're going to then load the translation text for that. We'll show what it translated to, and then we'll do the other direction where we'll translate it back, and then we'll compare them. And let's look at the uh, translation mapping here. So XLite map says use the name, and so this is the the uh, full name of the thing. So ebrain type underscore whatever. So let me save that this time so I don't make a mistake. And you see that it translated to ebrain type opaque, and then we confirm that it did translate back to the same value when we came back. Let me get rid of this because it's going to continue to. Um, every time we run that, if we change the IDL, it's going to update the um, types file and it'll keep bugging us that it's been reloaded. Okay, so the next thing let's do. In this case, we're going to, by the way, I'm going fairly quickly here. You can, because I, you can go back and, and, and slow this down and actually read through the text. 
but um, we don't, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going fairly quickly. But hopefully this all makes sense, and and you can uh, uh, kind of piece it together if, when, once you go back. So in this case, we're going to demonstrate um, binary formatting. So if we look here, we said, yes, we do want to generate binary streaming. And um, I'm going to open this up again here. And you can notice that um, down here at the bottom, it generated some globals for us to do binary, some global uh, streaming operators here for that. Right? Get rid of that again. Okay. And I'll save that and rebuild. And it says the binary round trip worked, right? So it uh, set it, it set it to a value. It created a, 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 a binary output stream buffer. It streamed that value out. Then it created an input binary stream buffer over the output stream buffer, which links the, the underlying buffer between them. And uh, it created a new enum and streamed back into that. And then it compared the two. And we got the binary round trip worked. So we know that that was okay. Okay, let's move on. This is going to demonstrate a particular sort of thing, which is I, I find it very useful in, in my code because um, we in the automation world, we often have to have uh, representations of, of values in a device, and we want the user to be able to set values and get them back. And in a lot of cases, they are particularly enumerated values, and we want to set a limit on that value that can be used to control the legal values that can be read and written to it, and this has a lot of uses. And what this does is um, it will format it will format out those values into a list with a prefix. In this case, I'm doing a prefix of available, and, and you could put anything you want in here. And with a separator value, I'm saying comma. So if we if we go um, if we say that, which I did, and let's build that. And you can see that it did available and it spit out the values. And if we look at the IDL, the uh, format map is the alt text, right? I said, I said, I do have alt text. The source is inline, which means it's defined right here. And it is being used as the format value. And format map is the one that's used by that um, uh, uh, format, whatever types. You notice that it, it basically puts the name of the enumeration in the, uh, the method names. And that way they don't end up with endless overloads that would become very problematic. For instance, if you, I don't know if you've ever noticed, you've done something with a lot of that. If you make a mistake and you try to stream something, it'll just generate a god awful list of, of um, errors saying it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. That's why we kind of avoid that because the name indicates what it's doing. But you know, like I said, that's very useful for me in a lot of cases. Okay. And next, we will do a and one of the alternate one of the other alternating or alternate maps. So there's load map, which is here, and we're using alt text two in this case. So I'm saying yes, I do have alt text two. Alt text two doesn't have a source; it's always in line. And I'm saying for the load map, use alt text two, which is the T1, T2, T3, and that supports this load string load brain types. So we should get the um, the T1, T2 type thing for foolish. So foolish is um, is T5. So let's build that. And loading alt text T5. So that worked. Okay, let's move on. And so now we're on the, um, the bitmap one. So this is just going to do a basic test. I mean, so much of the stuff above is also available. Uh, I'm not going to go back through it. So this is just something specific to the um, bitmap ones. So I'm taking the, I'm creating a bitmap value. I'm setting it to read, write, and then I'm testing whether all of these bits are on exclusive read, write, and that's not going to be true. So we should see the value was not exclusive read, write. It was, and it should give us read, write here. It should say it was read, write. And then I'll test if any of those, if any of these bits are on and read is, so we should get the value was readable. And there we go. The value was not exclusive read write. It was read. It was not exclusive read write. It was read write, and uh, the value was readable. So those two worked. And now let's. Uh, this last one here is just uh, demonstrating the uh, the loadable text version of it. So if we look in the message text guy here, 
Um, I'm setting a, a prefix for messages. You can also have errors here and an error prefix, but I'm not using those. And um, I'm giving them uh, labels. I, I'm having, I have text here, a value part number and available. And these are the actual loadable text over here. And you see here that I am in the IDL file. I am, am saying for the stream map. So this is for writing out to a text stream. I want to use the text and the text is this here. And I'm saying that this is the prefix, the message namespace prefix. And this is the facility name to get it from, which is this video demo program. And uh, this is the, um, the loadable text symbol to get. So it's going to use this to load the text for us, right? So in theory now, if we do that, we should get those, uh, get a list of those with the loadable text in them. And there are the loadable text values there. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, you know, that's uh, kind of simple looking there, but you, you can imagine, I, I think, what having this type of uh, functionality available to you for enumerations can do for you. There are a lot of things in applications that are enumerated values and, um, and uh, a lot of things that are um, also bitmap values that people would tend to not use uh, enumerations for because they're not very convenient for that. But when you have something like this, that can uh, really make it a lot more convenient to do as well. But overall, it's just uh, extremely powerful, and it doesn't take a lot of code to do that. I mean, it's very tweaky, but it doesn't take a lot of code. The, um, the, the stuff we're generating enumerations is a fairly small part of the IDL generator. And maybe in another video, I'll demonstrate the, um, the object request broker aspects of that. But the enumerated bits, are it's not a lot of code, and it really makes a difference. So maybe something you would want to consider. Um, this is not something we would provide to anyone on the outside, at least not at this time. Maybe one day we will um, make our general purpose code um, base available. So this is not to say, come use our tool. This is just to say, it's not that hard to build such a tool. And the, uh, the payoff for doing so could be uh, quite, uh, quite amazing. So there it is. And we'll, uh, we'll see you maybe in a, in a subsequent video where we'll demonstrate some more stuff.